Hi everybody, Miss Melinda here, your spiritual worker from MissMelindasMetaphysicalServices.com. I'm going to take a moment today to talk to you a little bit about candle magic and fire magic. Surprise, surprise. Um, I'm sure this topic is going to come up many more times. Um, it is what I do, it is what I specialize in, and there are a lot of different things within this topic to address. So two things that I'm going to address in this video are loading vigil candles. I did speak about this in a previous video, but there's a, a couple of follow-up details that I need to um, address here. And then the other thing that I'm going to talk about is um, just some basic uh, tenets of working with fire, respecting fire, and different things that can happen when you are working with fire and candles. So starting off with the vigil candle, I talked about loading vigil candles. And I talked about um, the fact that some people like to poke holes in the top of the vigil candle. I have one here. It's burning, so let me be careful. Some people talk about um, actually poking holes in the top of the vigil candle to load it with your herbs or your powders. And they feel like that's a good way to let the herbs and powders soak down into the candle. And I don't do that. And one of the reasons that I don't do that is because I feel that it interferes with the wick. It will interfere with the way that the candle burns. I also don't do it because I feel like it isn't necessary. Um, the reason it isn't necessary is because with the method that I use, as the candle burns and heats up, I don't know if you can see some of the wax here. So this candle's already been burning for several hours today and you can see how far down the wax has heated up and has melted so far. Um, as that happens, all of those herbs or powders that I've used to um, load this candle are actually sinking down into the wax. And you'll see that as these candles progress, you can see herbs coming down like this far into the candle, you know, near, nearing the bottom of the candle. So it's a very effective method to just um, put the, the botanical blends or put whatever your loading powder is on top of the wax before you start it and then seal it with a small layer of wax or a thin layer of wax there. The reason that you seal it with a thin layer of wax is not necessarily to hold it in, but so that it will burn well and so that it will integrate with the other wax in the candle as it burns. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about that because it's, there seems to be some confusion. Okay. Thanks for your patience. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about are just um, some common things to do with respecting fire, um, being in tune with the energy of fire. Obviously, fire, it can be a dangerous thing. Um, just because we are spiritual practitioners or root workers or witches does not mean we are immune to the fact that fire is dangerous. In fact, I would say that it's even more important for us to have respect for the energy of fire, um, to be connected to that, to pay close attention to it, um, and to cover your practical basis. So I've had a lot of questions about, um, about like how to attend to your fire, how to put your fire out, um, things of that nature. So the first thing that I want to address is do not ever leave a fire, a candle burning unattended. Um, these candles, even the vigil candles, are not intended to be left burning overnight. They should not be burning while you are away from home. Um, people get worried because they feel like if they're doing a, a specific kind of working or a spell, then it means that they shouldn't put their candle out. They feel like that's going to stop the spell or stop the energy of that working. Um, so what I have learned is that you don't blow it out. Blowing it out is not only disrespectful to the, the spirit of fire, it also signifies an ending to your service or your magical activity. So what you do instead is you snuff it out. Now, I personally do not currently have a fancy or a nice candle snuffer. Those are really nice to have, but you don't need it. 
Um, some people just use a wine glass. Some people just use um, really anything that you have around that can snuff out a candle flame or um, or restrict the oxygen flow of a vigil candle to prevent that flame from burning. And quite honestly, what I use is a coffee can and I just put it over the top of my vigil candles and wait until the oxygen flow is restricted and the fire goes out. For the other candles like this taper candle that you see burning behind me on that sweetening jar, um, I actually just wet my fingers and put the flame out with my fingers and that's just what I've always done, it's what I'm comfortable doing. So um, that is how you can put your fire out when you are not specifically working with that candle rather than blowing it out. Um, it's okay to put it out each night or each time that you leave your house and then just relight it as soon as you can. If you're going to have your candles burning in a room that you're not going to be in all the time, <clears throat> make sure that you consistently check into that room. Make sure that you are keeping your eyes on those candles um, periodically. Um, the reason that I say that is because obviously it's very important to respect the power of fire. It can be a dangerous element. It's a powerful element and therefore it's also a dangerous element. Um, just because you're doing work for a positive purpose or just because you may have strong spiritual tendencies or you may be powerful in your practice does not mean that you are automatically protected from dangers or mishaps. In fact, um, all kinds of things can happen with these candles and I have seen them happen. Sometimes a candle, a visual candle, will completely explode or burst or the the glass will just crack. Some, I've seen it explode, I've seen it crack, I've seen it shatter, um, I've seen candle holders become completely engulfed in flames for no apparent reason. That happened to me once with a brass candle holder. Um, some There are many times when these things will happen when there seems to be no physical reason for it to happen. Um, and there are spiritual meanings behind those kinds of events. Sometimes it's a Sometimes it's a positive sign and sometimes it's a negative sign. Most often it means a breaking up of negative energy or a releasing of an obstacle or blockage. So a releasing of a negative attachment or negative energy. It's a sign of clearing in a circumstance. Now other people have other interpretations. Um, I have done a video about the fact that interpretations are very personal and it depends on your relationship to the working and your relationship to your spiritual connection in general. Um, so my interpretations are not always the same as other people's. So that's one thing that can happen. Candles explode, they crack, they break. Um, unexplained things happen and sometimes it's for a spiritual purpose. Uh, also the plates that are underneath candles can often crack or break and I have the same interpretation for that kind of situation. I've seen these things happen for no apparent reason and I'm sure that it, you know, that won't be the last time that I see stuff like that happen. Um, okay, I was just glancing down at my notes and I think that that's everything that I wanted to say about candles and flames and loading candles today. So thank you so much for watching the video. Please like and share the video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, don't forget to comment below and share the video with your friends. Let me know if you have any questions about any of the topics that I have brought up today. Or if you have any suggestions for future videos, I'm always happy to take your suggestions. Thanks so much for watching and take care.